I know the seniors that are served by UICI, um, you know, come from far and wide. And, you know, we've always uh, made a priority at every level of government that I've been in to make sure that there's plenty of support for uh, senior meals, senior nutrition and transportation. And um, hopefully that uh, is something I can help you with in the future. Um, just to wrap up, you know, a, a couple of minutes of opening comments here. Let me just say that if you've read in, in the news that the state is in very good shape financially, that's true. And um, it should benefit all of you, both directly and indirectly. And in the immediate um, surroundings of UICAI, uh, for example, I know there's been efforts to make sure that the area is safe, especially with uh, the API, you know, with the hate crimes that go on out there that concern everyone. My office has been involved in trying to help the Japantown neighborhood and other neighborhoods out with that. But one, I want you to know one of my colleagues, State Senator Pan um, from Sacramento, has put together a $200 million um, subsidy, if you want to call it that, or investment from the state budget um, into uh, bolstering uh, security and services in uh, areas where there are significant numbers of, of Asian populations. So I will make sure um, as he gets that through, and I'm sure he will, it's part of our state Senate budget to fight for our fair share of that. And I also want you to know, for those of you who live in the immediate area or who are bothered by the trains, uh, we have been working very closely with the state through the budget process to try to get a, a multi-million dollar investment uh, to uh, reduce um, the noise and frequency of the trains that are coming through the area. So there's a couple things like that that I want you to know about. Uh, but the main thing I want you to know about is <laughs> that I'm here still uh, prepared to help in any way I can with your core service. And I'm very grateful, very grateful for all that UICI does, uh, for the board members uh, and all of you who have kept the organization going all these years. And we'll look forward to seeing you in person sometime soon. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Dave. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I see that uh, Suzanne uh, has put something in the chat. Yes, for those of you who want to reach me, um, I'm sure Suzanne is putting our contact information in the chat room. Suzanne Wheaton is our district director. Um, some people say district coordinator, but she runs the district office, which is located on Bascom Avenue. So it's uh, pretty centrally located. Um, but, you know, we take pride in coming out to see you so that you don't have to go all the way to the district office. But I um, wanted you to know, Suzanne's been with me both at the county and the state uh, for a number of years now, and she's very good at constituent services. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Suzanne for putting that information in the chat, appreciate it. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, so last year I had uh, started out with a quote, um, Helen Keller saying, uh, you know, the road doesn't end unless you miss the turn. So I just wanted to uh, let you all know we made the turn. Thank goodness. Um, I think, uh, a lot of words that we've heard is uh, words used are, uh, you know, pivoting. Um, I think that was probably the main main word that was used uh, for this year, uh, because this was not like any other year. Um, there was uh, no no guidebook uh, for this pandemic, and um, this required a lot of, of, of coordination and uh, just coming together on all different levels. And, um, you know, because of that, uh, we had an extraordinary year, a phenomenal year. And, um, you know, that, that really took thinking outside of the bento um, box here um, and, in, in really reimagining how we were going to uh, get through this year and reimagining how we were gonna deliver our services uh, to our, our participants, members, clients. Um, and that couldn't have happened um, without our staff. I'm incredibly 
proud of our staff for rising up to the occasion and meeting the needs of UI Kai. Um, and we could not have done this without the support um, of our board. So thank you so much. Um, you know, and I, I mentioned, um, you know, in the 47th uh, anniversary that it takes a village and it literally take, took a village um, at all levels um, from our, our staff to the board, to our volunteers, to, to our, our membership, um, you know, to different levels of government, um, our donors, and uh, just just the commitment. I'm I'm so um, like overwhelmed and humbled. Um, you know, I'm constantly saying uh, thank you to all of you, but the you know the words thank you just, just doesn't feel like it's enough. I have a lot of deep gratitude towards all of you. So thank you. Uh, next. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, share with you, we're doing this a little different this year. Uh, rather than our managers actually presenting, we're going uh, to go through uh, slides this year just because of the short program. Um, so I just want to uh, share from each manager and their, their department. Um, although there is one thing that's an exception is, is Sarah Fritz, our, uh, our financial fiscal uh, manager actually will be presenting the uh, fiscal uh, finance committee report. So she will be going uh, later on um, in the program. So we'll kick it off with uh, human resources. Uh, this is Brian Rodriguez and he is our human resource manager. And uh, the hot things that he wanted to highlight this year is um, the evolution of the COVID-19 safety mm -hmm. protocols. Um, as you all know, it is changing, I would say every 48 hours. Uh, between Cal OSHA, the city, the county. But uh, the main thing is that he's been staying on top of it for all of us. And the main thing is keeping us all safe and that we, we are going to be reopening soon in a safe way. And um, that has a lot to do with, with Brian leading, leading the way for us. Um, you know, uh, the other highlight was being essential uh, service providers. I think most people think okay. essential services being delivered are by uh, hospitals. And, uh, but, you know, I think we've all discovered over the course of the year that it are, it is many people. And, you know, when, when COVID happened and there was a shelter in place, uh, UI Kai remained open. We, we did not have uh, the luxury to close. Um, there were a lot of people needing our services for food, uh, connection to housing, uh, just medical information. Uh, so there was a lot of things that needed to be done. And so, uh, yeah, so UI Kai has been uh, here from day one throughout all of this. Um, but I do want to point out, uh, we added up the volunteer hours for this year, 4,726. That amounts to $73,489, you know, that, that's, wow, that's, that's a lot of manpower that uh, we, we don't have. And so, um, you know, I, I pass off to all our volunteers for stepping up, stepping up and uh, making it happen because we could not do what we, we have done without all of their help. So thank you very much. Okay, next slide. Social services, again, you know, we're talking about connecting our seniors to different resources. And um, one of the, I think one of the largest challenges this year was seniors being isolated. And so what we did was uh, we had wellness checks and those wellness checks, and we, we called every single client and that was a 30 to 45 minute conversation with all of them. They were checking in, like, are you taking your medicine? How's your blood pressure? Uh, mental, physical health. And as you can imagine, they're, they were very isolated. So this was a very, very important part um, of the services we were providing. Uh, in addition, we continued on with our caregivers uh, support groups and our aftercare support group. Um, and 
uh, they reported out that they saved 33 people, uh, 33 seniors from losing uh, their independence. And that's a huge win. And that might, that number might seem small, but that represents so many hours and um, inv it's an invaluable win uh, for, for the senior. So we're so glad that we could be there for them. Um, and then, you know, there was a lot of questions and information out there on COVID-19. And so we constantly were going over uh, policies and procedures and uh, spreading the, the correct information about COVID and keeping the lines open for them to verify uh, any information that they had heard. So that, that was really great. Uh, next slide. Senior day, day services. Uh, so this was our most vulnerable group and uh, we had to figure out how are we going to deliver services to them since they could not come to us. Uh, we started doing activity kits, activity boxes. And so we mail out 30 of these boxes every other week and they have different exercises. They have uh, art and craft um, uh, type of uh, exercise. Um, I'm sorry, arts and crafts uh, activities. And then there are like math problems and games. And so just um, ways to keep them stimulated while they're uh, isolated at home uh, with their caregiver, but it also gives them some type of constructive um, activity. Um, in addition to this, we paired it up with Zoom. Um, you know, many of them um, are technically uh, challenged. However, uh, luckily they have caregivers and we're able to uh, connect them. So every other week, twice a week, uh, we actually Zoom with the, some of the participants from daycare. And as you can see up in this picture, um, it shows them doing the exercises along uh, with our uh, senior day services uh, staff. So that has been wonderful and, and, and it's still continuing. Uh, the, we're looking at an open date for our senior daycare of, of October 31st of this year. Um, that is not set in stone and it's just a target date. Okay, next, next slide. Uh, senior nutrition. This is uh, one of the main reasons why we couldn't uh, uh, shelter in place at home and we came out every day is uh, that we were uh, feeding the seniors. And uh, here's a graph of, of uh, last year of how many meals we were serving and you can see how uh, much more we are serving today. And um, the uh, blue section is the meals that are to go. And the orange section is our meals on wheels. Um, you know, that number of serving 352 more uh, meals each month is, is just huge. And I'm so, so proud of, of the kitchen staff nutrition staff uh, for just stepping it up and making it happen and serving all those meals. And we're very, very grateful because we ended up adding on a third route to our Meals and Wheels service, but this could not have been possible without the volunteers that came to do the delivering of those meals. And so Maya actually wanted to uh, shout out those names, Daryl and Shoko Asing, Jim and Keiko Manning, Gabby Shoulder, uh, Doug Ray, Eric Chikasuye, June Tanaka, John Adachi, and Jane Kawasaki. Thank you so much for, for doing, doing that, um, coming out day in, day out, and not missing a day so the seniors could have uh, their meal. Appreciate that so much. Thank you. Okay, next slide. Uh, YAC activities. So this is for the main building. Uh, you know, Derek wrote, it's been a great uh, privilege to work, learn and share in struggles and frustration along our members. We had to adapt. This year was not the friendliest, but it did remind us the importance of our friends, family, and community. And I think he is so right. Um, he has been a busy guy uh, putting on all different type of uh, Zoom activities, uh, Natsukashi radio, uh, sing-alongs, 
uh, bingo online. Uh, so there was a lot of, of learning um, on how to do the, all of this and he made it happen. Um, and the most important part is that our seniors are enjoying those activities. But uh, the ones that I wanted to actually point out were uh, brown bag. We're delivering a hundred more food boxes per month. And this is a, the actual curve of, of food boxes that you see down below here. And at one point, uh, we, in one day, we delivered 185 food boxes. So that's huge for us because we're usually, uh, you know, we're used to delivering about 130. Um, okay, and then uh, we had our bento fundraisers. Uh, this was something that we had uh, uh, started to do just to uh, hopefully, uh, you know, at the time, at the beginning, we were looking at a huge deficit and we we're wondering how we were going to make up make up the difference for that uh hole in the in um our budget so we uh put in these uh bento fundraisers and together we raised uh, over forty five thousand dollars and so thank you for all those who had come out and supported that you know we really really appreciate that and the the thing that's great about this bento fundraiser is that it's not just supporting ui kai this was a true partnership, a win-win for the partnering restaurant. So collectively, uh, 45,000 went to those restaurants. Next. So Akiyama Wellness Center. Um, this is, a, this is a, I, I enjoy the slide uh, because Cheryl here uh, is doing virtual classes as well at, at Akiyama. Well, the uh, exercise uh, exercise classes. Uh, we have the recycling and sorting program con continuing to, to go, uh, but I just love her quote. You know, she says, I've become the in-house Zoom expert, something I never thought I would ever be. We are making plans to reopen soon, or, um, a return, but with a hybrid class. Um, our posture fit class is starting on June 25th. And I just love that, uh, you know, here Cheryl considered herself a non-technical person, but yet, uh, you know, rose up to the occasion to learn how to do Zoom and really uh, is the person that we go to now to ask different questions. She and Debbie, to be fair to Debbie, because Debbie knows a lot too. Um, next slide, please. And there's Debbie, Fun Development, uh, which uh, I, I wanna congratulate she and uh, the Give to Yak committee. Uh, they did an incredible job this year um, in, raising, in raising funds. Uh, you know, I mean, again, it's just been a phenomenal year, uh, but that was a lot of hard work and planning and a lot of coordinating. So really appreciate that, uh, you know, so, uh, and on the committee is uh, Janice Oda and uh, Murph Kato and, and Debbie, and the three of them uh, just do an incredible job. Uh, another part of Debbie's job uh, this year was to do IT, tech, uh, IT and tech support for us. And if you can imagine, uh, that was, it's been pretty much a daily job for her, um, only because there are so much Zoom uh, meetings happening and uh, needs for um, everything being done on the computer that uh, you know she really had to fill in all over. Uh, so she's like one army of one for our, our staff. So thank you. Um, you know, and she just wanted to say everyone has been very generous towards Jack and it's, it's not just financially, but with their time and talents, it's enabled us to make a bigger impact to those we serve in the community. So thank you. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, and this is a special recognition. While we've been closed, uh, you know, we took the opportunity that this is a great time to uh, make repairs and clean up. Uh, but there are three staff members who have gone beyond their job by staying late and doing other things for uh, UI Kai. Uh, so you can see Lolly and Derek here. Uh, <laughs> in their grubbies, they change their clothes after work and they've been painting uh, the inside of UI Kai. 
Uh, so they've done it from top to bottom. And um, I don't know if they're on the call, but I can't wait till you guys start on the outside. Um, and the other person is Stanley Uchida. Uh, he's been an in invaluable member of our team as well. Um, you know, he's always fixing things uh, for us. And thank God he know, has that know-how because he's uh, saved us an incredible amount of money um, just in maintenance. But he has taken uh, time after work and he brought his uh, little, uh, it's not little, but his uh, carpet cleaner from home. And he's been cleaning the carpets every day after work uh, on each floor and including the stairwell. So, uh, wow, uh, that's incredible. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna hand this off now to uh, Jane to continue uh, the special recognition. Okay, thank, thank you. you uh, if you'll go to the next slide. Yes, so um, from a, a board and, and uh, staff uh, collectively, we wanted to really recognize uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Ray and, uh, and Lucy Matsumoto. Um, so they've been long-term, uh, long-time supporters uh, and advisors to us. Um, and they've you know, always been uh, having a focus on uh, strategic thinking and having us think about the long-term and you know, plan um, and execute uh, long-term improvements. Um, and uh, as uh, you see here, there's a quote from um, Ray's uh, talk at our 47th anniversary event, um, where you know when he heard that we were uh, planning to you know raise uh, additional funds to replace our elevator and and do major um, rework to ensure that the uh, elevator was going to work smoothly uh, and uh, consistently for the long haul, uh, they really. Um, jumped in, uh, they resonated with this uh, idea and they made a major donation to enable us to go forward with this um, elevator replacement, which we hope to have done um, so that we can reopen uh, at, when the uh, uh, county uh, okays us for opening. So we are so appreciative of you know, their uh, leadership and the, um, uh, inspiration that they give to, you know, not just us, but I think other uh, community members as well, um, that, you know, things don't happen unless people step up. Uh, and, and we really appreciate um, that uh, approach and, and that attitude, and it really inspires us to, to keep going. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I don't know if they're, I don't see that they're on, but uh, we really appreciate their, their support. Uh, okay, and going on next. So um, following on this idea of long-term strategic planning, uh, one of the um, focus areas that we have had as a board is to uh, continue to, to broaden the intergenerational uh, engagement and support for UIKI. And so this year, the board approved uh, a commitment to help fund the Nikkei Community Internship Program by sponsoring an intern to work at UIKI uh, this summer. And uh, this summer we have, um, we're lucky to have uh, Jackson Souza, uh, who is our uh, NCI intern. Uh, so Jackson is on the call. And also uh, for the San Jose NCI program, uh, Miranda Aochi is uh, also an intern. She'll be working at uh, the Japanese American Museum of San Jose. Uh, so at this point, I wanted to invite uh, Jackson and, and Miranda, if you want to say a few words of introduction and, and let people know who you are, um, and hopefully they will be seeing you in the in, at UIKI and in the community. So Jackson, we'll start with you. Hi everyone. Um, Jane introduced me a little bit, but my name is Jackson Souza. Uh, I'm from Mountain View, and I'll be the NCI intern at UIKI this year. Um, just to introduce myself, I graduated from. Bellarmine last year in 2020, and I just finished my first year at college at UC Davis, and I'm studying economics. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do for my career, but I am interested, or I'm looking into law school at the moment. And uh, just a fun fact about me is, in the past year, I picked up playing chess. I just like it a lot. I can't really explain it. Um, I don't play every single day, but I definitely watch it at the very least every day. Um, 
I've met some of the people in this call, but it's nice to meet everyone else. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jackson. Um, Miranda, uh, if you would like to say a few words, um, you're welcome. Hi, I'm Miranda. I just finished my sophomore year at UC Berkeley. I'm studying data science with a minor in dance performance studies. And like Jane said, I'll be at the Japanese American Museum of San Jose. So I'll be around, but not as much. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're really excited uh, to have a younger generation of uh, folks um, looking at our programs with a you know, new perspective, uh, getting to know uh, some of our uh, clients and members, uh, as well as our staff. They'll be uh, meeting with uh, and, and learning about some of the, the different programs that we have, uh, and we'll be uh, interested to see their report uh, at the end of the summer. All right, next. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah uh, as the uh, representative for the Finance Committee, uh, and she's going to go through um, the UIKI uh, finances for uh, this past year and our uh, budgeting for uh, the coming year. Hi, hey, everyone. Great to see everybody on the call here. Um, another virtual call, another year down. Um, so um, this first page here is showing um, our estimate for FY21. So while we still haven't completed this year, we do have a good estimate of where we're going to be at the end of the year. Um, at the beginning of the year, we really didn't know how COVID-19, the shutdown would affect us and affect our revenue. So we were a little conservative with our budget. Um, however, with a great deal of help with our, from our supporters, which go from staff to the highest donor to um, you know, everybody in between, volunteers, everyone, uh, we brought in over 760,000 more revenue than we had planned, which is an absolute incredible achievement. Um, we also had a few costs that were slightly higher, but it, we also had revenue associated with those costs. So it wasn't, that really wasn't anything unexpected. Um, so uh, this kind of show, this page shows the overall of that. Uh, next page. Um, this page is still FY21. It shows a bit more detail of which categories and how each category did. So you can see that uh, our biggest, most successful category was uh, contributions. Um, not only did we have more donors this year, but we had a, a more a higher average individual donation per donor as well. Um, we also had significant increased performance with Give to Yak, um, our Golden Wish, and our new monthly Bento events. You'll see that that's over in the event column. That's why events did so much better as um, as part of that, as well as annual dinner. Um, the, uh, I'd like to note, as Jennifer also mentioned, that the Bento events, not only did they help us a lot out, but they also helped out uh, as a fundraiser for our local restaurants. Um, so I'd really like to give a big thank you to everyone who supported UIKai this year. And I'd like to mention for the Golden Wish, we, we have signed the contract for the elevator. Uh, it'll take a little while for it to get started and it will be down for a little while once it gets started. And we're expecting that to be sometime in the fall. Great job, everyone. Next slide. And um, so the Finance Committee has put together a new budget for FY22. And again, we're still being a bit conservative because we don't know how much of this year's funding will continue on into next year or, or donor generosity. Um, uh, contributions make up uh, one of the almost the, lar or the largest portion of our income, and that's very hard to predict. Uh, we do expect to have some of our programs open again and we'll continue with events. Uh, we also expect to have the usual cost increases that always happen with labor, utilities, and then uh, cost associated with actually opening up. So for FY22, we are expecting a loss of about 210k for the year, um, which is before depreciation and before any uh, PPP forgiveness loans. However, we just got very good news this morning that the SBA has approved our first forgiveness loan, so that will be turned into a grant and it'll be shown as income for the current year. Uh, so that didn't make it into the slides, but uh, we'll be working really hard to close next year's gap and we expect the we did get two PPP loans and we expect the next one to be forgiven also. Um, 
lastly, I'd like to really thank the support that I get from the Finance Committee for helping me with everything finance related and helping keep our books nice and clean. And to the UIKI staff, um, you guys have worked so hard this year through these difficult times, making my job easy and um, one of the best places I've ever worked. It's been a lot of fun being here. Thank you, everyone. Next. All right, thank you, Sarah. And uh, we're gonna turn it over to uh, Alyssa Takigawa, who's the chair of the HRC, the Human Resource Committee, to uh, give a brief report. Alyssa. Hi. Hi, thank you. Okay, so real briefly, the HR committee, we've been engaged in, for all intents and purposes, and standard activities, and so far as compensation is concerned. So every year we look at, uh, what's happening out in the market and apply that to our employee population with the goal of offering the most competitive salaries that we can. Of course, there are limitations being a nonprofit, but with this being an ongoing discussion with each passing year, we're closing that gap a little bit more um, with each round. So we continue that effort even in a um, very strange environment of the pandemic. So that was very promising and uplifting news. And it practically doesn't need to be said, but we did work very closely with Brian and the HR committee at large and just navigating through the pandemic, uh, knowing as Jen said, conditions were changing on practically 24, 48 hour rotation. So trying to keep up with that and to the best of our ability to stay a step or two ahead of it and at least get us prepared for potential scenarios. So we had those discussions. Um, going forward and looking ahead, we would like to facilitate an annual review process for Jen. So we'll be taking that up for um, discussion very shortly here. Our goal will be to streamline the process so we don't wanna get caught up in the administrative aspects of it, but still to have it be very rich in content. And again, as we do every year, we'll look toward the compensation trends. We have access to local market data among peer groups, so local nonprofit organizations. So that allows us to ensure that we're following where we like to be and that we're headed in the right direction. So we'll continue to track those numbers. And lastly, we, in the spirit of coming out of the pandemic tunnel, we want to continue the efforts that have been extended so far to our amazing staff in recognition for all that they've done to get, to get us through this. Uh, we like to continue and maybe provide one last push for that endeavor. So we're having discussions and uh, looking for ways in which we can reward and recognize employees. We already have a couple ideas in the hopper, so we'll take those up and have something come out of that in the end. So that's, okay. that's it from the HR side. Thank you, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next slide. Uh, so I'll uh, give an overview of the Vision Promotion Committee. Um, so our accomplishments in uh, this past fiscal year, uh, we looked at, uh, uh, this is pre-pandemic uh, pre and, and uh, during the pandemic, we, we revamped and standardized our volunteer registration and waiver forms so that those were all um, uh, meeting requirements and consistent uh, across all of our uh, volunteer base. Uh, we also um, revised the benefits for our senior club members uh, in light of the pandemic driven restrictions and closures. Um, and surprisingly, as Sarah will attest, we didn't expect any <laughs> members to sign up this year because the facilities were closed, but by you know implementing some of the um, uh, uh, transitions that we were able to do, um, and we were able to offer benefits to our members, and our you know and membership has uh, uh, returned. Uh, and so we you know hope to continue to revise those benefits and and add some of the new things that uh, benefits that we were able to provide this year on an ongoing basis. Um, and the other major accomplishment for the uh, Vision Promotion Committee, working with uh, Sarah and Derek. Uh, and uh, the staff 
uh, to implement a customer relationship management or CRM database uh, for primarily for our donors and our volunteers so that we can um, have uh, consistent reporting uh, and make sure that that data is uh, maintained and available for reporting. Uh, for the coming fiscal year, uh, we are um, evaluating a client management system that's going to uh, simplify uh, clients and volunteers uh, registration process, attendance, invoicing, payment, um, so that uh, we move away from paper processes that require lots of administration uh, effort so that it's easier for our clients as well as for our staff uh, to know who's registered, who's signed in. Um, we can do reporting uh, more easily. Uh, so that's uh, our big goal for this coming fiscal year. Um, and we're also looking at um, you know, membership and donor categories and the associated benefits. So I wanna thank my, the VPC committee. We, uh, we've been working hard and, and uh, the staff has been working very hard with us. So uh, thank you. All right, next. So now um, we, uh, uh, one of the key objectives of this annual meeting is to elect um, uh, the board of directors. Uh, so um, Randy, I'm gonna turn it over to you to go through the uh, election process, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, the only real business we have, uh, real business uh, at the annual meeting is to elect uh, board members and officers. Uh, we do the officers every other year. So this, we didn't do it last year. Uh, so we'll do it uh, this year following. Uh, so um, the board members that are uh, uh, being nominated for another three-year term uh, are uh, Christine Kimura and Hatsumi Yamamoto. Um, we have three outgoing board members uh, and, uh, you know, Joel uh, uh, hasn't been on the board that long, but, uh, you know, we really appreciated his energy and, and sort of uh, uh, fresh outlook, you know, being, being younger. Um, uh, Ricky and Steve, uh, are, you know, both past presidents have, uh, have chaired uh, fundraising events. Uh, there's really a lot of uh, in institutional knowledge that we're losing, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, they're, or fortunately, I guess they're they're uh, uh, moving on, and uh, you know we wish them well. We wish everyone well. So anyway, uh, so Christine and Hatsumi are nominated uh, for uh, board uh, director positions. Uh, do I have a motion uh, to uh, approve that? So Randy, I'll I'll move to. Uh approve the um, renewal memberships for Christine and Hatsumi. Okay, and uh, do I have a second? I uh, second that. Uh, who's that? Randy Ando. Oh, all right, great, thanks Randy. Okay, uh, so all in favor, uh, say aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody opposed? Okay, I'll, I'll take that as unanimous. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the officers. Next slide. Okay, so uh, the officers uh, serve two year terms. And uh, uh, so this year, uh, Tori, uh, is um, going to be our past president again, and Jane is going to be uh, president again. And uh, for uh, co-vice presidents, uh, Judy is going to be vice president again, and Chris will join her. Uh, <clears throat> as far as secretaries, I'm going to I'm going to be secretary again, but 
you know, we're, we're trying to um, give Nicole, you know, <clears throat> more um, whatever uh, visibility and, and uh, uh, participation uh, or an opportunity for her to participate more. So she's gonna be the co-secretary -sec uh, along with me and Alan is gonna be our treasurer again. Um, so um, can I have a, uh, a motion to approve uh, these officers? Uh, this is Judy, I'll, um, whatever, yeah. <laughs> it's like, move. I propose that I move, yeah. I think retirement has gotten to my brain. Um, I move that we approve this. Okay, great. Do we have a second? I second. This is Ben. Ben, okay. All right. So we uh, we have a motion and second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, I will take that as unanimous too. Okay, uh, that's it. I guess we're done. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Um, Jane, I see that Wes is raising his hand. Okay. Wes, do you want to unmute? Did, did, and did you want to say something? Not on this subject. I, okay. I, I'm just listening, but I have another question. I'll wait to the end. Okay. All right. Then let's move to the next slide. All right, um, so uh, we wanted to close this uh, event with uh, a remembrance of uh, some uh, champions for UIKI and for um, seniors in the uh, Bay Area. Uh, this past year, we lost uh, Tom Masuda, a longtime board member, past board president, um, and also a, a very active volunteer on various events. Um, at the uh, tender young age of 93, um, we uh, really will be missing his smiling face and his, uh, and his energy. So I uh, wanted to uh, recognize uh, Tom and, and his wife, Helen. Um, and then I wanted to turn it over to you, Wes, to say a, words about, a few words about Colleen Hudgen. Oh, you need to unmute, Wes. Uh, Colleen Hudgen was the executive director of Live Oaks in uh, Willow Glen, and uh, she was a, a continuous champion for seniors, uh, especially in uh, senior centers. And we we had a coalition of senior sec uh, executive directors. Plus, she was in a video way back when, when we promoted UI Kai, and she said many great things about UI Kai. Um, she was also on the uh, Santa Clara County uh, um, Senior uh, uh, Committee, and uh, she always would bring people to the city council or to the Santa Clara County uh, Council um, Board of Supervisors meeting to advocate for seniors and continuous funding for for our programs. And it wasn't for her. We may have lost a lot of uh, funding, but she was very vigilant and diligent in terms of uh, uh, making sure that uh, these two bodies would not defund uh, our senior centers. And we were able to continue to exist and prosper because of her advocacy. She was a big, booming woman who had loads of personality and had a booming voice when she spoke. You could not ex ignore her when she spoke at the city council or at the uh, uh, board of supervisors meeting. And when she came, she was so joyful and, and had this exuberant personality, which uh, nobody can forget. And uh, I'm sure some of you remember her uh, at many of our activities. Thank you for letting me uh, recognize her. 
Thank you, Wes. Um, okay, and uh, so let's, uh, with that, we will be closing the meeting. Um, if you go to the next slide. I have uh, a question. Yes, yes. Uh, in, just in the budget, I was wondering if there is any money allowed for uh, the staff to get uh, increases in their salaries? No, yes, no. I don't know. Yes, there is some in there. Oh, that's great. That's great. You deserve it. You guys deserve it. <laughs> yeah, so Thank I think you. Alyssa um, yeah, mentioned it. I think HRC is working know. very hard. Oh, um, good. Very good. I didn't hear that. So I just wanted to ask that question. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we really appreciate all of you for coming tonight uh, because your interest and your support and your input is what keeps us moving into the future uh, with confidence. Um, so on behalf of the board and the staff, domo arigato gozaimasu. And thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Masuda was a great person, too. I just want to say he was oh. Mochizuki. You didn't say, mention Mochizuki and all the things that he did for our company. And in the 35th anniversary, we recognize him and his wife uh, as well. Uh, volunteers. He was a great person and I love the guy. I love the guy. Thank you. Yep. Yep. I think uh, we all felt his love. So thank you, Wes. All right. If you have any other questions, um, you know, please feel free. Uh, we'll, we'll stay on for a few minutes uh, to uh, answer any questions that anybody has. Uh, but otherwise, you're free to leave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank luck you. to you, Aikai. More, you know, keep going, Jennifer. <laughs> Thank and you, James. Wes. Yeah. Okay. And you too, Wes. <laughs> hey, Eric, <laughs> Chika, Eric Chikasuya, you look like you want to ask a question. Oh, you have to. You're, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, I'm just getting hungry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we won't keep you from dinner. There's an hour. Thanks, Sophie. Yes, thanks. And thanks, Debbie, for keeping us. Yes, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Lights going. All right. Fabulous job, Debbie. Thank you. Of course, yes. I threw a bit into my, my thing, but yeah. I recovered. <laughs> okay.